Hi everyone, it's Dr. Cambo, and today we're going to focus on the pathology and laboratory section of our CPT code manual. Here we're looking at a code range of 847 all the way over to 89398. So as usual, our table of contents, which begins on page 517, tells us all of the wonderful services that are provided in this particular area. The one thing I want you to note is this section is designed for actually testing the specimen. Whereas um, when we look at, for example, surgery section, cardiovascular, there's a code for vena puncture. That's actually collecting the specimen, such as when a patient has a blood draw. All right, so after that, in the um, beginning, you're going to see several pages, and I have to be honest, in my book, I actually have them folded down, page 518. This is your molecular pathology gene table. If that's not an area that you're going to be working with, you can do the same thing like me and have that actually folded down. Then we have the guidelines that actually begin on page 536. There are some familiar concepts there, one being um, separate or multiple procedures as well as special report. And we actually talked about separate procedure and special report in our radiology section, so I won't repeat that content on today. So let's take a look at page 537. That's where our first family of codes begin. And here we have codes 847 through 881. And these are our codes for organ or disease oriented panel. And these panel codes are actually grouped based upon usual laboratory work that's ordered by a provider in situations where the provider wants um, a diagnosis or is screening for a variety of diseases or conditions. Now these groups of tests may be performed using uh, some type of equipment and that's depending on the situation or, or disease. And when you take a look at these panel codes on page 537 and 538, one of the things that should catch your eye is that first you have the panel code listed. So for example, if you take a look at code 851, you'll notice the electrolyte panel. And then underneath there, it says the panel must include the following. And then there are four tests, and each of those tests has a unique code that's listed behind it. So I know you're probably wondering, well, what does that mean? Well, number one, if your doctor wants an electrolyte panel, and that's what they order, um, that means that they want carbon dioxide, chloride, potassium, and sodium, and you would only report 851. Well, what if the doctor just wanted chloride and potassium only? Then you would not report the panel, you would report those codes individually. Now, I want to tell you that in, with my videos, I don't take into consideration any type of payer rule or regulation. And that's primarily because um, I'm not, there is no way that I can, can go over all of the different payer rules regarding the use of the CPT codes. Just wanted to let you know that. So that means if the doctor does not want all four of those tests, you don't use the panel code. He or she has to want all of the tests that are in that panel. Now, if, and this is per the subsection notes, if the provider um, wants tests in addition to what's included in the panel, you report the panel and then you can um, re report that additional code. So let's say the provider wants an electrolyte panel and wants all four of those tests, but then he also wants a uh, prothrombin time. Then you would identify a separate code for the prothrombin time. Now, in those situations 
um, where you have a group of tests that overlaps two or more panels, you're going to report the panel that incorporates the greater number of tests to fulfill that code description, and then you're going to report the remaining tests using additional code. So for example, do not report CPT code 847, which is a basic metabolic panel with ionized calcium in conjunction with 853, which is a comprehensive metabolic panel. All right, let's move along to our drug assay codes, which begin on page 539. So our drug assay drug procedures are actually divided into three subsections. You have therapeutic drug assay, drug assay, and then chemistry. Our code selection for these particular categories are actually dependent upon the purpose and the type of patient results that are obtained. When we're talking about a therapeutic drug assay, those particular tests are done to monitor clinical response to a known prescribed medication. So let's say um, a patient is taking Dilantin. Um, the doctor will order a therapeutic drug assay test to measure how much of the Dilantin is in the patient's body. Oftentimes you'll hear them say they want to make sure that the amount that's in the patient's body is at therapeutic level, meaning that's the level that they need them to be at in order to be stable. So it could be that the testing um, requires them to increase the medication or decrease, you know, based on the results. All right. Now, the two major categories for drug testing in the drug assay subsection are known as presumptive drug class and then definitive drug class. Presumptive drug class test is used to identify the possible use or non-use of a drug or drug class. So here we want to know is that element in the patient's body. Now a definitive drug class test can either be qualitative or quantitative to identify the possible use or non-use of a drug. So qualitative is, is that substance in the blood? Quantitative tells us how much of that substance is in the blood. Now on page 539, you see that there are some tables for definitions and acronym conversion listing. Um, definitely want to make sure that you are reading all of your subsection notes. You're going to hear me say that over and over and over again because unlike other code systems, ICD-10 PCS, IC, ICD-10 CM, the guidelines are not just appearing in the front of the manual. With CPT, your guidelines are appearing throughout the manual. Next up, page 548, we have our evocative suppression testing codes. And these are codes 800 or 80400 through 80439. These particular codes are measuring the effect of an evocative or suppressive agent on what is known as a chemical constituent. So if you take a look at code 80400, which is ACTH stimulation panel, this particular test is used to determine whether the ACTH is being produced in the patient's body. Here, you could have a situation where a patient has uh, adrenal gland insufficiency. Now, the one thing I want you to note is that these are also panel codes. And so just like your other panel codes, the provider has to want everything that's in the panel um, in order for that code to be reported. Next up, we have consultation, clinical pathology, page 550. Two co-options here. And these 
consultations specifically are based upon whether or not the consultation was actually limited, such as an 850, or comprehensive, as reported in 80502. Now, limited is one that is done without the pathologist reviewing the medical record. Comprehensive, as noted in the code description, is when the medical record is reviewed as a part of the consultative service. When any of these consultation codes are submitted to a third-party payer, you best believe that a report is needed to justify these services. All right, next up, we have our year analysis codes, which are also on page 550. And guys, this is actually a very small but powerful set of codes because they have all different sorts of variations. So number one, if you look at code 81000, you'll notice that it identifies specific tests that are performed for your analysis. But then as you start to dig down into the subsequent codes, you're going to see that these codes identify if the test was done by a machine, which is automated, or manually, which is non-automated. -automa you're also going to see that it'll identify if a microscope was used. Some of the codes identify how many tests are needed or performed. Also identifies um, if the test is qualitative or quantitative. That's a very popular term in the um, pathology section in general. All right, next up, we have molecular pathology. Now, this is a pretty big area, guys. Starts on page 551. And your molecular pathology codes themselves are divided into what's known as Tier 1 and Tier 2. Guys, lots and lots and lots of code options and notes. Um, here, you're going to find um, codes for identifying if a patient is genetically predisposed to a particular condition, such as cystic fibrosis or um, colon cancer, just to name a few. Now, we're going to keep on moving past this. There is a lot of um, codes in that particular area. We're going to go over to page 583 to our chemistry codes. Now, one thing you'll want to note regarding the chemistry codes these codes are for a specific tests performed on material from any source. And any source, as you look through the code description, you'll see what I mean by any source. Any source being urine, blood, feces, uh, sputum. They could do a breath um, analyzer test with these particular codes as well. Now, the one thing you'll want to note is that the material uh, for examination can be from any source unless otherwise noted in the code descriptor itself. When you have a specimen that's measured from, or an analyte that's measured from multiple specimens, from multiple uh, sources or different sources, or the specimens are obtained at any time, the analyte itself is going to be reported separately for each source and for each specimen. Of note, the examinations are quantitative, that's how much, in number, unless further specified. All right, so um, guys, here again, this is another area where you want to pay close attention to the notations. Um, there are also parenthetical notes here that tell you what to do and when not to do certain um use certain codes. All right, next up, we're going to go over to page 594 to our hematology and coagulation codes, which are codes 8502 through 85999. These codes are actually based upon various blood drawing methods and techniques. Now, with this particular area, 
and as a patient you are very familiar with uh, hematology because you'll commonly see a hematology study where they're drawing a purple tube next time you have your blood drawn look at the colored tubes because they do have a meaning the method that is actually used to perform the test for hematology and coagulation studies actually is what's used to determine code assignment. One very common test that is listed in this area is a complete blood count. Um, and if you look at 85025, you'll actually see where the complete blood count codes are. Of note, guys, you have to pay very close attention to these codes. Blood counts can be manual, we know that from earlier, or automated, and they can also be uh, have a variation with regards to what is actually included. So, for example, if you look at 85025 versus 85, 5027 you'll notice that they start off the same way complete CBC automated and then in parentheses hemoglobin hematocrit RBC WBC and platelet count but 85027 ends after platelet count 85025 includes an autom automated WBC count so Paying attention to the details is, of course, critical. Next up, page 597, we have our immunology codes here. These codes report the identification of conditions of our immune system that are caused by the action of an antibody. And so those codes are on, again, page 597. Pay attention to the wording, qualitative versus quantitative just to name a few. Next up on page 603, we have our transfusion medicine codes. And our transfusion medicine codes report the tests that are performed on blood or blood products. Here you have codes 86850 through 86999. So some of the options that we have here are um, screening of blood for antibodies, autologous blood collection, processing, blood typing, compatibility testing, as well as preparation of and treatments performed on blood and blood products. Next up, page 604, we have microbiology. Microbiology codes are reporting the study of microorganisms. And what you're going to see here are um, tests for like bacteria or fungi or parasites or also even viruses. Next up, page 612, we have our anatomic pathology codes. These codes are 88000 through 88099. And these particular codes report the examination of bodily fluids and tissue after death. Now, the post-mortem exam, which is after death, involves completion of either a gross, microscopic, or limited autopsy. These codes are divided based upon the extensiveness of the examination. If you look at, for example, 88005 is with the brain. 88007 brain and spinal cord so pay attention to the details this particular section does also include codes for forensic examination 88040 as well as the coroner's call 88045 Next up, we have our cytopathology codes, page 612, codes 88104, all the way over to 88199. Here, um, I, the, the first test that probably comes to mind is a pap smear. However, also known as a papanakalu smear, uh, but cytology is actually laboratory work that's performed to identify if cellular changes are
present. And it's not just for pap smears, it could also be on fluids that have been aspirated from a site to identify if there are any cellular changes. Again, pay very close attention to the terminology here because these codes do have slight differences as you go from one code to the next. And of course, watch out for your parenthetical notes. All right, next up on page 614, we have our cytogenic studies. And here you have codes 88320 through 88299. And these codes include tests performed for genetic and chromosomal abnormalities. Next up, starting on page 615, we have our surgical pathology codes. These are codes 88. 300 through 88399. These codes describe the evaluation of specimens to determine the pathology of a disease process. Of note, you want to pay close attention to the different code levels. For example, 88300 is for surgical pathology but is a gross examination only. And then the subsequent levels are gross and microscopic. Of note, for these particular codes, the unit of service is actually each specimen. This is important because when you're reading the pathology report, you may notice that you have more than one specimen. They may um, identify them as specimen A, B, or C, just to name a few. So one of the things that I want you to notice as you start to look at these different level codes is that they're divided not only by level, but they're also divided by body part and how that specimen was obtained. So for example, if you look at page 616, you'll see level 3. 88304 and you'll see the body part of appendix and it says other than incidental but if you turn the page and go back to page 615 level 2 appendix is under 88302 but it's appendix incidental so it is very important to identify not only the specimen but how the specimen was obtained and I, I guess the other thing I can tell you that is um, different is the lower levels, like the um, gross exam, that doesn't need a microscope in order for the provider to give a pathologic diagnosis. And that's because the probability of disease or malignancy is minimal. But as you go from one level to the next, those codes have a higher level or probability of malignancy. And so that's why those code levels are higher. And next up, we're almost done, guys. Page 620, we have our in vivo transcutaneous laboratory procedures, not to be confused with in vitro. And here, you'll notice that these procedures, again, are transcutaneous. We have a couple of options for bilirubin as well as hemoglobin. All right. And lastly, guys, on page 621, you have your reproductive medicine procedures. And here, this is where you're going to see things like... Um, your artificial insemination um, culture of the eggs and the embryos. Um, you also are going to see preparation of in, uh, embryos as well as um, different types of identification techniques, as well as if you go over to page 622, you have um, procedure codes for insemination of the oocytes. All right, guys, this has been Dr. Campbell with your CPT pathology section. Up next, we're going to take a look at the medicine section. Thank you so much. Have a great day.